Hey everybody, Boone White with the 323 Concept Furniture Restoration here. Um, still without a computer, so we're still trying to do a couple videos that um, don't require editing. So this will be just a one, one shot, no edits. Uh, so bear with us, hopefully I don't mess up too bad. And um, today, just wanted to talk about some of our favorite tools in the shop. I'm gonna go through my five favorite tools and then maybe talk about some of my favorite finishes. Um, so let's start, you know, um, furniture work, you know, probably our two biggest tools in the shop um, are our sander and our sprayer. Um, we do, as any furniture worker knows or woodworker knows, you do a lot of sanding when you get into furniture work. So if you don't like sanding, wouldn't recommend it. Um, or if you can't at least tolerate it, I wouldn't recommend it. Unless you got a helper that can help you out doing it all. Um, but for the longest time, we just used Dewalt sanders, orbital sanders. Um, so let me back up. On our sanders, we use five inch orbital sanders. When we first started out about five or six years ago, we started by using the Dewalt orbital sanders and they worked fine. Um, great tool to start off with, but um, the more we started sanding, um, the more we realized they, they weren't long-term tools. Um, those motors, um, from what I've heard, I think they've updated some things. They used to be really great, long-lasting tools. Um, Dewalt motors on those sanders don't last um, more than three months, or at least in our case, we went through about three sanders and they only lasted about three months. So um, we finally decided to upgrade our sander. Um, not only the sander, but something that was really big um, and a big deal to us was the amount of dust created from the sanding. And so we um, decided to pull the trigger at one point on getting a Festool um, sander and dust extractor. Um, probably, I would rank that probably the number one best investment, maybe even number two. There's two fighting for number one, and I'll tell you about the other one here in a second. But um, the Festool sander, we got the ETS EC125, and just, that's a bunch of numbers, but basically all that means is it's a five inch sander. Um, orbital sander and since then we've upgraded we've got a couple different ones um, we've got the Rotex and we've also got one of their detail sanders um, as any furniture worker knows a lot of the times it's not just all straight countertops um, or straight tabletops a lot of the times you have to do edges so it really comes in handy to have a detail sander or a square sander of some sort um, so um, we got that detail sander to help get into all the corners and you know uh, the, the sanding abrasives are great on those. They last a while. Um, they, we don't burn through them near as quick as we used to on the on the Dewalt sander. And I think when we were using that, we were using the uh, Diablo um, abrasives that you can just get from Home Depot. And they were fine. They, they worked good. But uh, I did notice when we switched over to the Festool sander and abrasives, they did seem to last quite a bit longer. Um, which was great. So, um, and but the main thing that really helped out is our dust extractor. It's a uh, Festool CT48. Um, that's I believe that's their biggest size dust extractor. I decided to just go the biggest one. The the less you have to empty a vacuum bag, the better. Um, but we only use it for sanding purposes. So it takes months for us to fill up one of those bags. It doesn't take. Um, it's not like you have to empty it every week. And those. Um, that dust extractor is bar none the best dust extractor I've ever seen. There's when you're sanding, I mean, it's just literally almost just about no dust, virtually no dust, um, comparatively to when we were using that Dewalt. You know, there was dust everywhere, shrouds of dust. So when when you're working, that's not a huge deal. But when you get into spray finishing and you're trying to let your finish dry, um, you can't sand anywhere even close to that piece. Otherwise, you're going to stir up dust and get it all over your project. So. Um, probably that ranks number one or, or number two. The other thing that ranks number one or two is our spraying system that we got a couple years ago. Um, we got, so when we first started, I'll back up, when we first started, we did a lot of brushing. We did a lot of wipe on poly finishes and it was sort of a foolproof way to get a good finish on our projects. Um, but any, anybody that's been in this a while sort of knows that takes a little while and as, as furniture folks and as running a business, we were always looking for um, the best way to sort of speed up our processes, to make it cleaner, to make it more efficient. And we started with um, the HVLP turbine units. We started with a Fuji, um, a Mini Mike 3, which is a three-stage turbine. And it worked great for a while. It was good for what we did, but something we noticed um, 
depending on the finishes that we were using is we were having to thin out more and more of our finishes not all of them but a lot of them um, so we decided to upgrade to a more powerful turbine unit and from there we went over to the titan cap spray 115 which is a six stage turbine which had plenty of power hardly had to thin any of our finishes but um, the gun that came with it i bought one that was a couple years used and i think it was the Maxim elite gun and we were just i, I was not very happy with the gun the finishes um, it wasn't bad it it put on a decent finish um, but the more and more research i did um, i actually entered a contest a couple years ago and uh, won an Apollo 7700 atomizer gun and that gun was just hands down better than either the Fuji or the or the definitely better than the Titan the Fuji gun was better than the the Titan gun but the Fuji uh, I'm sorry the Titan. I told you I'm not gonna be able to edit this so <laughs> I'm gonna stumble a little bit the Apollo gun was just hands down better than either of those and I I can't even remember. I tried another gun at one point. I think it was called an American Sprayers gun. And the the Apollo just blew all those out of the water. Love it. And so somewhere along the line, I decided to upgrade to the Apollo turbine as well. It's only a five stage turbine, which was sort of a downgrade as far as how many stages. Um, but what I love about the Apollo turbine is it has a lot of adjustability. You, there's a dial on the side of them where you can dial in um, how much PSI you want to put through there. Um, so it was great as far as that went. It's got um, capabilities that keep it from overheating, which I really liked. And if I were to rate it, I would say it's a little bit quieter than the Titan, which noise hasn't really ever been a huge issue to us. But if you're spraying on site, some customers might appreciate a quieter unit. Um, but the Apollo, turbine and the Apollo 7700 gun. Oh, the turbine is a Precision 5 Pro LE, I believe, um, or maybe just the Pro. It may not be the limited edition, but um, those combinate that combination that we got has been putting down just really, really good finishes, um, which sort of leads me into the number three game changer for our, our finishes and our, our business has been the finishes that we've been putting down it's not necessarily a tool, but then it is sort of a tool of the trade. You know, it's um, every furniture knows you're you're only going to be as good as the finish that you're using. And we've in the last year or two, we've been using a lot of Renner finishes. We started off with general finishes, which was a good product. But I started getting to where customers would want custom colors. And Renner, I found a vendor where I was able to get them to do custom color tints on Renner finishes. And um, it has just been great. We've been using the 851-02 Renner finish and we just uh, send in our color to our manufacturer. We have been using Timberlane finishes um, over the last year or two and they've been pretty good. A um, Couple of hiccups here and there, but their customer service is usually pretty good about getting everything resolved. Um, but we've been getting our finishes there and every finish we've been putting down paint wise has just been ultra smooth um like factory finishes you wouldn't believe how great they are so um but general finishes as well you know we use the milk paints on general finishes and those two two brands of paint the so the renner finishes the reason i prefer them above general finishes right now is one it's a little bit cheaper and easier for me to get the custom color tints if you've got um, if you've got the preset colors on the milk paints with general finishes, um, and your customer chooses one of those, I say, yeah, go ahead and stick with milk paint. Um, but one of the other reasons that I am really preferring going with Renner is I can get <coughs> excuse me a two component paint, uh, two component finish, which basically you're mixing in a catalyst, a hardener. Um, with the paint and it's putting down a much durable finish and uh, General finishes does offer that but I, I haven't experimented with theirs yet um, I think it came out after I started using the Renner finishes and I've just been so happy with Renner that I've been sticking with those But you mix the hardener in and it's just putting down a really durable paint finish Which I love just being able to offer that to our customers, you know being able to offer a super durable finish with a super durable 
um, and super smooth finish is just a great feeling to have as a company being able to offer that to our to our customers so um, probably the fourth tool um, that we um, is most important to our business you can see it in the background is our clamping system um, not so much the pipe clamps that you see but on the bottom rack back there I've got a new set of Jorgensen clamps clamps you know I do a lot of furniture repair work so clamps are a huge part of what we do we do a lot of re-gluing and repair work on chairs on tables on pretty much any furniture and clamps are a huge part of that so I got these Jorgensen 24 inch clamps they are great for everything I've been doing um, they're set up to where you can combine the clamps so you can even get a 48 inch span out of the two 24 inch clamps and you can reverse the head on there and get a, a spreader clamp to where you can separate surfaces not only put the pressure this way but you can separate surfaces which really comes in handy for what we do um, and lastly but not least um, which is just a really basic woodworking tool is we've got to have our table saw here and our miter saw you can't see it in the shot um, but our miter saw and our table saw are essential uh, mainly to doing repair work if you're building furniture those are going to be probably at the top of your list but on furniture repair and restoration um, those are super important to have and you by no means have to start at the top of, of uh, top of the chain with the best quality if you're starting small just get you know just a really small mobile table saw um, you don't need any anything really super expensive but um, as time and money allows I would um, just recommend upgrading a little bit at a time and, and get yourself a nice setup we just upgraded to this and we've been in business for five years um, and you know it's it's great for for everything it's so much smoother than I had a 10 year old Hitachi mobile saw and it was good for for a while it lasted but um, it's just great being able to upgrade to, to little tools like this you know um, over time and and this wasn't even something that broke the bank you know I found it online it was used had the the outfeed table with it and it's even got a router table on it um, but it's been great for we've been using that for about a year or so and that was all I had on my list as far as tools but while I'm thinking about it I was looking in the reflection of this of this video and uh, the, something that came to my mind are these dollies having furniture dollies are a huge plus having those around the shop as well as furniture pyramids and just all together you know furniture dollies furniture pyramids things to support your tables um, or your furniture pieces in general sawhorses um, those those three I would sort of clump together in one category those are an awesome asset to have around any furniture shop um, for my saw horses, I just built some, I went and got the brackets from Home Depot and just cut some two by fours and made some low sitting um, uh, saw horses, but you can make them any size you want, any any span, and those just a really cheap way to make some that are really good and durable. Um, that's all I've got as far as my top tools that we love to use in the shop. Um, and that's about it. Oh, on finishes, stain wise, We've been using a lot, I started off using a lot of oil-based uh, Minwax stains, and um, I think those took about a day, maybe two days to completely dry out, if you're, especially if you're doing like a water-based finish over oil-based. And I've been trying to gravitate towards waterborne finishes um, just a little bit better um, for everything I do. That's another reason I gravitated from oil-based to water-based finishes. You know, it's just a lot healthier for you. Um, still wearing a mask, still protecting ourselves. Um, but as far as stains, I've been using a lot of the Verithane stains and the reason why is I, I tried it out once and I just love the coverage of them and the dry time. You know, they're usually dry and ready to top coat within, a, within an hour and uh, they're usually one coat coverage. Whereas some of those oil-based stains I would use, sometimes it would take two, two really good coats to get that color that I was looking for. So the less, the less coats you have to do and the quicker dry time, the happier I am. Um, and just <laughs> I know I'm adding some tools but I would say maybe one more tool I would like to mention is our dust extractor not dust extractor our um, exhaust fan we put that in our spray booth uh, about a year year and a half ago and it has been great at reducing all the overspray and fumes in our spray booth um, 
if you have sprayed without one, you know you can get a lot of overspray that creates a lot of just overspray dust on everything around it on your on your project. So um, if you don't have great ventilation, you know I would really recommend getting one of those exhaust fans um, and having one of those handy. So that's I'm just gonna go ahead and wrap it up. I could probably think of a couple more tools um, that would be really handy around your shop, and maybe I'll do something for just little hand tools that I would really recommend for the shop as well. But larger tools, that's uh, our top seven really large tools that I would really recommend for having around the shop. If y'all think of anything else that's handy around your shop, comment below, let me know. Um, I'm always looking for ways to improve our shop, to improve our efficiency and to improve our, um, you know, the efficiency of our business. So if y'all have got any other ideas, definitely let us know below. Um, Hey, uh, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell if you want to receive future videos. And as always, hit that like button and share if you think anybody else will benefit from the video. That really helps us out as far as the YouTube algorithm. And we'll see you all next time. Later.